That was um, an excerpt from Nina Rota's Trombone Concerto from the second movement, and I chose this piece to play because it makes me anxious. I wanted to do a video about uh, pathways of anxiety, different ways that the body channels uh, anxiety, and so I wanted to choose something that makes me uh, genuinely anxious so I could demonstrate dealing with that anxiety. Um, in general, Anxiety comes from conflicting emotions, and specific to the Nina Rota uh, Trombone Concerto, um, on the one hand, I have these feelings of great fondness for the piece. It's a really meaningful piece to me. It speaks to me somehow, um, and it's something that I would like to share with you and to put out into the world. But at the same time, it is difficult, it's demanding, and putting it out there also means that I'm putting myself out there to be judged or criticized. Um, so those are the feelings underneath that cause this kind of tension and anxiety for me about this piece. And I'll get into, in a moment, the specifics of dealing with that anxiety and being able to record the, the video of performing it. But first, I want to go into this idea of there being different types of anxiety, different uh, pathways of anxiety. Um, this is really groundbreaking information from ISTDP, I think. And it's nothing that's pulled out of um, thin air. It's based on lots of science and research. Um, and this is probably a good time for me to give my disclaimer that I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm a performing musician, so um, when I'm sharing things with this video, I'm doing it from the perspective of a musician, not as a medical doctor. Um, but I've had years of experience, and I've also had um, some ISTDP um, therapy as well, so I'm bringing this perspective. At any rate, getting back to anxiety, I used to always think that uh, anxiety was kind of a monolith. In other words, that you were nervous or you weren't. And I had no idea that, were the, that there were these different ways that the body um, channels anxiety, different kind of symptoms, meaning I guess you could say different types of anxiety, different manifestations, different symptoms. Um, and not only that, but with the different kinds of symptoms, different things that you can do. Um, with ISTDP, you talk about three main types of anxiety. There's when anxiety is um, 
channeled into striated muscle. There's when anxiety is channeled into smooth muscle. And the third one is cognitive perceptual disruption. Um, I wish these had catchy names, but they don't. <laughs> so um, striated, smooth, and let's call it a CPD um, are the three, three pathways of anxiety. Um, so I'm going to go through each of these briefly and talk about them a little bit. Um, so the first one I mentioned was striated. When your anxiety is channel channeled into your striated muscle tissue, um, what happens is you'll feel tension in those muscles. And this includes, um, just to give you some examples of common ones, hands, tension in your hands, tension in your shoulders. That's a common one that I have sometimes if I feel really anxious and tense, get sh tense shoulders. Um, jaw, your neck. Um, for those of us who are playing wind instruments, um, intercostal uh, muscles, these are the muscles between your ribs, those are also striated, as well as pelvic floor muscles. Um, that can be important for a wind player, that can really interfere with uh, producing notes, starting notes if you have a lot of tension in your pelvic floor. Um, and these are all muscles that are voluntary, you can control them or tense them or untense them voluntarily. The one really important striated muscle that is involuntary is your heart. Um, and so heart racing is also a um, symptom of striated muscle tension. So um, these are all manifestations, all symptoms of tension in your striated muscles from anxiety. And the significant thing about anxiety in your striated muscles is when you have striated tension, you still have access to your emotions. You still can get to your emotions. Um, and that's important because when emotions and feelings rise, then your anxiety goes down. It's one or the other. It's physiologically impossible to be anxious if you're feeling an emotion strongly. And to me, that's amazing. If you're feeling an emotion strongly, then your anxiety is going to drop and it, you won't feel anxious. And to me, that's amazing information to have. Um, my first video that I made was actually about performing with anxiety and striated. And um, so in that video, I demonstrate this way that when I'm feeling this kind of anxiety, I can get to this kind of emotional freedom. And I want to take just a second to talk about this because I don't mean that you just get swept up in your feelings and play whatever. What I mean is that you're free to feel whatever you feel. It could be like what I described with the Nina Rota, which is this meaning and emotional content of the music. Or it could be um, just the joy of performing. Something I'm really um, passionate about with technique, something I'm working on. Um, it could be a n number of things, but it's just whatever emotions are coming up, that's what I'm going to allow myself to feel. So I'll put a link to that uh, video in the uh, description below so you can check that out. Um, so that's striated muscle tension from anxiety. And then the next two are smooth muscle and CPD. So smooth muscle is when you have tension in your smooth muscle tissue. And these are involuntary and uh, internal um, muscles. A lot are connected to your digestive tract. So it can be issues with your gut, with your stomach. Um, it can be having an urge to uh, go to the bathroom. Uh, there's this cliche of a soloist backstage throwing up in the green room before they have to come out. And when I hear something like that, I think, okay, that person has a smooth muscle tension. Um, so these are all physical manifestations of uh, smooth muscle uh, tension. Uh, at an even higher level of anxiety, you can get to this cognitive perceptual disruption. I think I said I would call it CPD. Um, and that's this disoriented, fuzzy kind of thinking. It can actually lead to feeling dizzy, even fainting. Uh, super high anxiety can lead to um, hallucination, actually. Um, I think it would be pretty unusual to experience that on stage. 
I actually have experienced um, something weird in this area. The first time I ever played Brahms Second uh, Symphony at the end, um, I had this kind of weird out-of-body experience where I almost felt like, yeah, it was like an out-of-body kind of experience. And I had to ask um, <laughs> the section if I played the high D. <laughs> they assured me I did, so I take their word for it. But um, I, looking back on that, I think that must have been what that was. But um, anyway, I also made an, a video about performing uh, a performing strategy for higher anxiety, and I'll put a link to that one too below. I go into some more details about that. Um, but fortunately, there are different strategies for each of these um, kinds of uh, anxiety you might experience on stage. So, getting back to uh, the Nina Rota, um, on the first day I tried to do some takes of this, I, um, I was pretty tense, and I did get a good take but it didn't really reflect everything I wanted to do with the piece. It was usable, but I didn't really feel like it was what I wanted. Um, and I recognized the tension that I had as being striated muscle anxiety. So the rest of the day after that, I worked through what I wanted to do with the recording, what I hoped to say musically, and what um, my motivation was. Um, and I thought about um, making this video in terms of helping people, getting this, what I think is great information out there to all of you um, about ISTDP and these concepts that really help me every day on the job playing with my orchestra um, that maybe might help some of you as well. And ultimately, I tapped into this kind of will to succeed, this desire, this determination to do my best and really put it on the line and, and go for it. And then I came back the next day, and then I found this kind of fighting spirit. Um, and this kind of fighting spirit, I talked about this in another one of my videos um, about self-doubt. And I'll put a link to that one too, um, down below. But I came back with this fighting spirit, and it was great because I, I got a take that I felt really happy about that really showed what i have been working on with the Nina Rota, and that also I felt like I was um, really tapping into these kinds of feelings about the piece's connection to the musical content that gives me inspiration about colors and, and sounds um, for my playing. So um, I will list on my blog some of these symptoms that I've gone through, and just as a general summing up, what my current strategy is right now that I'm doing with my orchestra is to, first of all um, to recognize what kind of anxiety I have. These days it's mostly uh, striated because one of the goals of doing ISTDP is to learn to tolerate anxiety so it goes into your striated muscles. Um, but at any rate, but then once I'm feeling this anxiety and I've identified what kind it is, to use the kind of technique that goes along with it. And I talk more about those in my other videos as well. So I hope this is helpful to you. Um, I'm really interested to uh, get your comments. And um, yeah, best of luck. Thanks.